Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? Hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. So I'm coming on here to talk about God. Amen. Talk about God. Let me invite some people really quickly. Let me invite some people. I'll be nice and share. And you do the same. Make sure you share this broadcast, okay? So I'm going to talk about just how wonderful God is. That's all I do is talk about my God. Every day when I wake up, I understand that my life is to give him honor. Amen. Every day that I wake up, I just want to give God some praise. I just want to worship him. Amen. God is awesome. So this stream is for those of you, you're looking for direction from the Lord. You're looking for direction from the Lord. Holy Spirit, we just step out the way so that you can speak to the people the way that you want to speak to them. What you want to say, Father God, I'm just a vessel. I decrease, oh God, so you can increase. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I cover myself with the blood. I cover my family with the blood. I cover our possessions with the blood. I cover this broadcast with the blood. I cover the people who are listening to me with the blood of Jesus. Amen. I am so awesome right now. Hey, Patrick, what's going on? God is so good. Those of you, you're looking for direction from the Lord. You have decisions you have to make and you don't know what to do. You're like, okay, what do I do? Which path do I take? You're at a fork in the road. This is for you guys, okay? Those of you, you're trying to find your way with the Lord, amen? So this broadcast is for you, amen? Let me give you a verse for the day. This verse right here just changed everything for me. The Bible says, Taste and see that the Lord God is good. Let me get that verse up for you, if my phone will act right. Come on now. So it says, taste and see that the Lord God is good. So I want you to have Psalm 34, verse 8, always close to you. Psalm 34, verse 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Is good and so the question of the morning or the day some people is morning some people's afternoon the question is have you tasted okay from from the Lord have you tasted from the Lord have you tasted and have you seen that the Lord God is good amen and so when you come to God God says no good thing will I withhold from you so have you tasted of the Lord the Bible says taste and see have you seen, okay, from your own experience, have you tasted and seen that the Lord God is good? I'm talking about your own experience, okay? It says, blessed is the man who, or the woman who takes refuge in him. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So when you take refuge in the Lord and you trust in God, you are blessed. And everything else is history. Nobody cares. Amen? It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay. Let me, let me tell you how my morning went, okay? I'm going to tell you how God is so awesome. So this morning, I went to drop off my paparazzi jewelry at the um, post office. Those of you, you haven't gotten your jewelry, I'm going to put the link for you to get your jewelry. I'm also going to in invite you to sell some jewelry. $5, honey, nickel, lead free. People are buying these up, okay? And I made director last night. Last night, I, I'm now a director in paparazzi, and I'm also a VIP in carrot bars, teaching people about saving gold and cryptocurrency backed by physical gold. Blessed of the Lord and most highly favored. Yeah, God is so good to me, okay? And he's good to you too. I'm a brag on my God, because those of you who know my story, you already know how far we've come. And I'm not going to dim my light for anybody. I'm not going to dim my light for anybody. God has been really good. Why? Because... I, I've, I've been seeking the Lord, okay? When I've sought the Lord and he answered me. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that you need will be added unto you. And people around me, you already know, I be seeking my God. Don't even understand everything, but I know that I seek God. Above all else, 
I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I know that everything that I need will be added unto me. Let me tell you, God said, taste and see. Okay. Then he showed me the word experience twice. I was driving. I saw the word experience. Now we know all these words because, you know, we smart. We know everything. Like I know what experience is. But I'm going to tell you what experience means. We're going to break this down to show you how good God is and how he speaks to his children. He who has an ear. If you have an ear or you have ears, you need to hear what the spirit of God is saying. So I look up experience because, you know, I don't know anything but what God shows me because I'm never too smart to learn. That's why you got to be humble because some people think they know everything and they don't know nothing. <laughs> I got a master's degree. I don't know nothing. Okay. The Holy Spirit show me something. I go research it because there's something that I didn't know. He's obviously showing it to you because you don't know something. Okay, humility will teach you a lot. So I saw experience. It says, um, explore um, some possibilities, experience. That's our experience. The word experience is practical contact with an observation of facts or events. Have you experienced the Lord? Have you experienced the Lord? Have you had a practical contact with an observation of facts or events? Concerning the Lord, Yahweh, yes or no. Experience also means to encounter or undergo an event or occurrence. Have you gone through an encounter with the Lord? Have you tasted and seen that the Lord God is good? Not religion, God. Amen. Some of the words that are associated with experience, it says, Involvement in, participation in. You must participate. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Erica. Hi, everybody. You must participate with what God is doing. He said, how can two walk together unless they agree? God is going this way and you're going that way? Uh-uh. You must participate. You have to have an experience with God, a contact with him. Amen? So it also says, um, encounter, to meet. Have you met the Lord? Have you met the Holy Ghost? It means to run into, have, it means to, um, to face, have you faced the Lord and talk about you humbling yourself and going into worship and praise unto God, right? It also means taste. Please write that down. Taste. That goes with Psalm 34 verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It, is, it didn't say taste and see that your job is good. It didn't say taste and see that your nation is good. It didn't say taste and see that that food over there was good. It says the Lord, the Lord, amen? And experience, um, the word taste is associated with the word experience. So that's how my day went. So he showed me experience. I look it up. I'm like, okay. Then a truck passed by me with the word, big word, taste on it, Okay. And there's something else the Holy Spirit keeps on showing me. Let me see if I can pull it out for you. Let me see if I can pull this up for you. In the name of Jesus, speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. We're going to taste and see that the Lord God is good. Okay. When I, when I was looking at the, the different facts about the sheep, one of my facts says, Sheep have an excellent sense of smell, okay, and have scent glands both in, in front of their eyes and on their feet. <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> this is in interesting because we're compared to be like, we're like a sheep. It said the sheep have excellent sense of smell. You know when somebody's cooking something, first thing we do is, mm, that smells good. Have you tasted and seen that the Lord God is good? You smell that food, you're like, mmm. And when you hungry, when you are hungry, it's like your sense of smell, right? It's just heightened. And so I'm telling you, God is putting aroma of blessings around us. And we have to have a strong sense of smell to be able to, I smell something. I smell the aroma of blessings. Amen? And you got to be like, you know how the dog, they know how to sniff? Well, it said the sheep, they have a strong, excellent, excellent sense of smell. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? So if he's the shepherd, then we're the sheep. Okay? He, he said he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Are you ready? 
Are you ready for your table that's prepared for you? Taste and see that the Lord God is good. It also says they have scent glands both in front of their eyes and on their feet. I'm talking about wherever you go. I'm talking about taste and see. You can see the blessings. Wherever you're walking, you, you can pick up the smell, the scent. You can track what God is doing. You have discernment, discerning of spirits. You have wisdom. You have knowledge. You have understanding. You can see what God is doing. Amen? So that's what he showed me. Experience, taste is connected to it. Then I was driving. And I saw a sign that says, no matter what, trust God. Please write that down. No matter what, trust God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, mm -hmm. trust. Thank you, Erica, for sharing the, the video. You are awesome. God bless you, my sister. Okay, the Bible says trust in the Lord. Some people, you, you're trusting in your own opinion. You trust in people. Listen, the book of Jeremiah said it's a curse to trust in people. The Bible says trust in the Lord with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And it, the, the sign was right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me see. Bobby can't see it. Let me see. Right there. It says, no matter what, trust God. When I saw that, and these signs are all around, like, Virginia, I, I, I drive around, I see them all the time. Like, you know, not all the time, but I see them, like, randomly. And that was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. It says, no matter what, trust in the Lord. The, the sign, and I like how they have the bird right there. Do you see the bird? They that wait upon the Lord. That means you're trusting the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let me get that verse for you because we need to know that God has something great for us. Okay? It says, um, in, I think it's Isaiah 40. I was reading that earlier today from my Bible um, plan that I do. So let's go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. That's where it says, Comfort, comfort my people, say it the Lord. Well, when you go down to the bottom of Isaiah 40, it says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not? So God's not going to faint. He's not going to pass out. Neither is, is weary. He doesn't get weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Who feeling weak? God give you strength. God is increasing your strength. How is he doing that? Every time you go in God's presence, he's giving, giving you more strength. How is he going to do that? By his joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Who needs some more joy? Who needs some more joy? It says right here that he giveth power to the faint. Those of you who feel like, oh my God, I'm so weak, I'm fainted. God said, receive power. Receive power in the name of Jesus. And to them that have no might. You have no might. It seems like you're failing. It seems like things are not working out for you. It says he's increasing your strength. The name Gabriel means God strengthened. And also the word Hezekiah. Okay? Strength. And you're going to need to know about Hezekiah. Because I'm going to break it down Hezekiah for you in a minute. Hezekiah's story is profound. Trust in God. Trust in God. Because God is working stuff out for you. So it says... He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. God is increasing your joy so that your strength could be increased. It says in verse 30, even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You wait on God and you trust in your God. I know, I know the media, people in the world, they trust in their money, they trust in people, they trust in their job, they trust in their beauty, they trust in drugs, they trust in alcohol, they trust in sex. But God says in verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That means you had strength and
and it became depleted because of your anxieties and your stress and your worries and your fears and the enemy has been sucking you dry, robbing you of your strength. God says, I'm going to renew your strength. Renew. That means I'm going to do it again. We thank God that he's a God of a second chance. Renew. That means something bad happened to you. And God said, I got you. I'm going to renew your strength. I know some people, you think you're strong all the time and you try to like fake the funk. But some of us, we get weak and weary. We're like, Lord Jesus, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. And God says, but they that wait upon the Lord, taste and see that the Lord God is good. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. God's going to raise you up. You felt weak and if you're fainting, you're passing out. Person who faints and passes, they're passing down, you're going to hit the ground. But God said, I got you. I got you. I'm going to give you new strength. I'm going to raise you up. You're going to fly. You're going to soar in my presence. I'm, I'm going to show you how good I am. I'm a good father. Taste and see that the Lord God is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Take refuge in him. He said, no matter what, trust me. Don't trust your eyes. Don't trust your feelings. Trust in the Lord. Wow. With all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Trust God. That is the posture of a true saint. You trust in God even when things look crazy. You trust God. Why? Because you understand that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail it much. And when you go to God and you pray, he said, before you even start praying, I already heard you. I already heard you. I told you to come boldly to my throne of grace. Why do you think I'm telling you to come to me? So I can bless you. So I can bless you in the name of Jesus. He said, you shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. What else did he show me? This is all this morning. I'm driving and he's speaking to me. I also saw the, um, a, 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 a truck. It says Everett Express. So I'm like, okay, what's, what's this? What's, what's Everett? So I look it up because I don't know. It says Everett. Let me look up what Everett is. Because I looked it up earlier on my other phone, but I'm using my phone to live stream. So let me search it for you. And so the name Everett means E-V-E-R-I-T-T. -T. It means brave, hardy, and strong. Please write that down, those who are taking notes. This is, this is all that he showed me. Everett means brave. The righteous are as brave as a lion. Okay? The lion is strong. It means hardy. It means strong. Everett means brave, hardy, and strong. Okay? They that wait in the Lord. What's going to happen to you? They that hope in the Lord. Waiting on God. God said, I'm going to renew your strength. Okay? And express me. I'm going to do it quickly. I'm going to do it quickly. I'm renewing your strength quickly. I'm renewing your joy. I'm, I'm giving you more joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that's what the word express me. God going to do it quickly, 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 quickly. Amen. So he showed me that. And I'm taking my notes. Then he also had me reading the book. Reading about Hezekiah. And he kept on showing me 15. Number five is symbolic of grace. And so 555, five, five, I call that triple grace. Grace is the favor of God, the power of God to do what God is calling you to do. And so with Hezekiah, if you know the story of Hezekiah, powerful story. Let me read that story for you, for those of you who want to know. Hezekiah, I know you already heard about Hezekiah before. Do you know what his name means? You know what the word Hezekiah means? God is my strength. God is my strength. Okay, so let me let me give you the um the verse about Hezekiah. Holy Spirit always speaks so clearly, so clearly. So he gave Hezekiah 15 more years to live. Those of you who are sick, this is for you right here. This is for you. This is gonna bless you real good. When I read this yesterday, I was like, oh my god, this right here is something else. So it is in the book of 2 Kings. 20 verse 6. 2 Kings 20. Okay? And so I'm, I'm going to start from verse 1. It says, Hezekiah, right? He became ill and was at the point of death. 
Is that your story? Because I know, I know a lot of us are not at the point of death. Okay? So there's hope for you. There's hope for you. Listen to this story right here. Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. I love how all throughout the Bible, God is showing you that he's bigger than death. I mean, he raises, he raising the dead, Lazarus. He raising the little, the widow woman's son. I mean, whatever, all of them, it's raising the dead. All throughout the Bible, raising the dead. Christ was risen from the dead. So it says, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. So even if you're at the point of death, God can fix your situation because there's nothing too hard for God. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Get off your religiosity seat and trust in the Lord. There's nothing too big for him. It says the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, it says he went to Hezekiah and he said to him, put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Imagine the prophet come to your house and say that to you. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. That's a hard word for the prophet to bring to the men, to the king. So the Bible says in verse two, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. So the first thing you do when you get bad reports, you don't go calling nobody real quick, right? The first thing you wanna do is to turn your face to the wall and you wanna pray. In another um, section of this story with Hezekiah, he got, he got a, a bad letter, a bad report, and he, he opened a letter before God. So those of you who get them bad, the, the bad mail, negative mail, you can open up in the presence of the Lord. That's a strategy as well. So in this case, Hezekiah found out he gonna die. The Bible says in verse two that he turned his face to the wall. And what did he do? Did he, did he cuss everybody out? No. He turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. So when you get bad reports, turn your face to the wall and pray to God. Because he said in the book of James, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail it much. So you want to make sure you get your prayer in. And you want to pray the word of God, by the way. Then it says, this is what Hezekiah said to God in verse 3. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. He began to remind the Lord of all that he has done for God. He said, remember, Lord, how I walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And the Bible says, and Hezekiah wept bitterly. He began to cry like, God, I, I was faithful to you. I walked before you faithfully. My, my, with a whole heart, I was wholehearted, devoted to you. But you know how we start crying? That's what he was doing. And he was, he was weeping bitterly. And so the Bible says that in verse 4, before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Okay? Verse 5, go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God, your father, David says, I have heard your prayers and, and seen your tears. Please write that down. God has heard my prayers and he has seen my tears. Now, this, this is what else the Lord said. Oh, this is so good right here. Now, the prophet, God told the prophet to go tell Hezekiah, you're getting ready to die. Put your house in order because you're getting ready to die quickly. You're not going to recover from your illness. You're going to die, Hezekiah. Hezekiah said, turn his face to the wall, began to cry and, and remind God of all the good things he did for God and how he was faithful to God. And as the prophet was leaving, okay, this is how God, God is able to change the situation around, turn around orbit, 24-hour blessing. The Bible says, as the prophet was leaving, God said, go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David says. I have heard your prayer, Sarah. I have heard your prayer, Erica. I have heard your prayer, Sherry. I have heard your prayer, Stacy. I have heard your prayer. And what else? He said, I've heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. He's like, Erica, I've seen your tears. 
Sherry, I've seen your tears. Sarah, I've seen your tears. I've been bottling up your tears for you as a reminder that I, that I have to bless you. That weeping may endure for a night, but guess what? Because, because the earth is orbiting around its axis, listen, things must turn around in your favor. Weeping may endure for a night, but your joy has come, honey. Your joy is in your belly. Who's your joy? The Holy Ghost. One of the, fruit of the, one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. Love, joy. Amanda, yes. God has heard your prayer. All your prayers. And he's seen your tears. He's seen how your eyes got all puffy, nose running. You know how we start drooling? God said, I saw you. Because my eyes are roaming the earth to see who love me. I'm always looking upon my children. I know where you're at. I know you by name. I have you inscribed in the palm of my hand. Amanda, I got you. It says, I've heard your prayers and I've seen your tears. I will heal you. This that right there is a cherry on top. Oh, I wish I had a little cherry right there. Write that down. Hi, Taisha. I will heal you. What is it that's sick in your life? God said, I've heard, I've heard you talk about it. You've, you've been praying to me. I've seen your tears. I'm going to heal that thing. I'm going to heal that thing for you. Because I am Yahweh Rapha. The Lord who sees you. I provide for you and heal you. I'm Yahweh Jireh. I see you. I provide for you. I'm Yahweh Rapha. So after I see you, after, listen, after I see you, I'm going to provide for you. What is it that you need? Healing is your portion. Healing is your birthright. I've come to heal you. Isaiah 61 is still your portion in the name of Jesus. He said, I've, 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 I've heard your prayer, Hezekiah. I've seen your tears. I mean, Isaiah just prophesied, just prophesied, just prophesied to him and said, you're getting ready to die. And before Hezekiah, it said, before Hezekiah had left the middle court, the word of God came to him and said, turn back around. God is turning your situation around. He said, go back and tell Hezekiah this. Because Hezekiah humbled himself and prayed to God and cried out to God, God sent the prophet back. The prophet's coming back with a different word. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Different word. Different word. See, pride will kill you, but when you're humble, God said he give grace to the humble. He give grace, 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 grace. Five, 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 five. I give grace to the humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. For in due season he will exalt you if you faint not. Listen, five, five, five. Grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God give you grace. He give more grace when you're humble. Humble yourself. Humble yourself and God's gonna raise you up. He said, I will heal you. Verse 5. I will heal you in the name of Jesus. And it says, on the third day, he said, on the third day, write down three. Three represents completion, perfection, and resurrection. Resurrection, resurrection. On the third day from now, you will go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. God is adding up the years. He said, I restore the years. I will re listen, Joel 2, 25. I believe that was. I will restore the years the palm of worms ate up in your life. I will restore unto you the years. Not only am I, I'm going to give you your blessings. I'm going to give you your blessings. I'm giving you years. Giving you time. Giving you time. Giving you time. Giving you time. And I talked, I talked to you guys about how God allowed the sun to stand still. To give Joshua more time to fight. We talked about that before. But God is getting ready to do something with the sun in this story as well. And that's why he's making me pay attention to this. 
we talk about the sun, how the earth is orbiting the sun. And we did a whole teaching on that. If you didn't see that video, go back and watch that. Orbit, 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 orbit. Powerful, powerful word. Has many definitions. But God is talk about the sun, the sun, the sun. Let me get you, let me get you that verse. Those of you, I don't think I've ever seen this verse until last week. God is adding, renewing our, giving us the years back. But we wasted time, got sick, the enemy done got, got us sick, and wrestling with your sickness for 10 years, wasting time, you're weak and feeble. Uh -uh, God's time to restore the years. And so Isaiah 30, please write this down, Isaiah 30, 26. It says, the moon will shine like the sun, and the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days, when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he inflicted. So if you can imagine, it says, your healing, what's it going to be like? It's going to be like the, 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 um, the sunlight that's seven times brighter, like seven full days. Healing is going to be like radiating inside of you. The moon will shine like the sun and the sunlight will be like seven, seven times brighter. The sunlight will be seven times brighter like the light of seven full days when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he inflicted. Then you go to Malachi. Let's go to Malachi about the sun of righteousness. It's going to rise with healing. There you go. Malachi 3. Those of you, you need some healing. This is for you. Your marriage is sick, your kids are sick, your money is sick, everything is sick. You can apply it to everything. Malachi 4.3 But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness, who's the sun of righteousness? Jesus, will, he said, will rise with healing in his wings and you will go free, you will go free, you will go free, leaping with joy like calves let out to pasture in the name of Jesus. Taste and see that the Lord God is good. Healing is just radiating all through you, out of you. You are, you are the light of the earth. Why? Because God is your light and your salvation. And if light is inside of you, the circuits turn on. God's dunamis power is turned on inside of you. Then healing is the manifestation. So I bind the strong man of poverty and sickness and, and rebellion. And all of them, I bind and cast them out into the abyss. In the name of Jesus, I release the will of God. I release the word of God. I release the angels of God. I release healing. I release restoration. I release the fruit of the spirit. I release love, joy, peace. I release shalom, which is prosperity, tranquility, and wholeness upon you in the name of Jesus. God said, I've come to heal you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so let's go back to Hezekiah. This is very important. He was getting ready to die. And he knew to humble himself and pray to God, turn his face to the wall, turn his face to the wall. And before he was done crying and weeping, the prophet was commanded to go back with a different word that I'm giving you 15 more years. Five, 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 triple grace, triple goodness, triple favor, triple power. Three, he said in three days, you're going to go to the temple and everybody going to see that there is a God. Listen, it says, I will add 15 years to your life. May God add 15 upon 15 upon 15 years to our lives. Because he said, I've come that you will have life and have life more abundantly. I shall not die. I shall not die but live to declare the works of the living God. Out of my belly is flowing rivers of living waters. In the name of Jesus. It says, I will heal you. On the third day from now, on the third day from now, you will go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. 2 Kings 20. Verse 6, and I will deliver you, and I will deliver you, and I will deliver you, and I will deliver you. Hallelujah. And so it says, and this city, God said, I will deliver this city from the hand of the king of uh, um, Assyria. Because Assyria was coming after um, Hezekiah, he was coming after him. And God said, I'm going to deliver you from your enemies. <sighs> 
I'm going to heal you and deliver you. Hallelujah. Because I'm the God who fights your battle. Exodus 14, 14. And no weapon forged against you will prosper. I fight for you. 2 Chronicles 20. 2 Chronicles 20 said, the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. And when you, when you humble yourself and you turn your face to the wall and you begin to cry out to God, God said, I got you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you. And it says, why? I will defend this city, what? For my servant David's sake. David is beloved of God. Beloved of God. He was a man of the God's own heart. And God said, I'm going to bless your bloodline. I'm going to bless your bloodline. I'm going to bless your bloodline. And so our bloodline is blessed a thousand generations to infinity in the name of Jesus. He said, I will deliver this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant, David. And hear what the Lord says. God is going to give you practical solution to your situation. Practical. I was talking to a young lady last week and I told her to eat some mangoes. How about on the news? They talk about mango healing this and healing that. This is what the prophet said. Woo. God told um, Isaiah, he said, listen. In verse 7, Isaiah told the king, Hezekiah, prepare a a poultice of figs. Get you some figs. I just did a teaching about the figs about two weeks ago. The fig. He said, get you some figs. Okay? And so it says, they did so and they applied it to um, Hezekiah's boil. They got some, they, they, they got like a paste of the figs. And they apply it to the boil. And he recovered. Mm. My God, my God, taste and see that the Lord God is good. Right now, my screen, it just said finish. And the enemy's trying to cut me off, but God said, Jesus said on the cross, it is finish. God's going to give you, God's going to give you divine, practical, divine solution. It's like he's going to show you. What to do, and when you do it, you're gonna see the results. They put the fig paste thingy on Hezekiah's boil. The boil was getting ready to kill him, and when they put it on there, the Bible says he recovered. Write this down. You, I, I have recovered. Not only are you recovering your blessings, but you're recovering too. He said he gonna give you new strength. Okay, you've been sick. God said you're recovered by the stripes of Jesus. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in verse 8, Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, what will be the sign that the Lord will heal me? Because God said, miracle signs and wonders shall follow us. What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? What will be the sign? And it says, what would be the sign that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? You already told me I was getting ready to die. But now you tell me in three days, I'm going to recover and go to the temple. Whew. I'm going to be healed in three days. Three days. Jesus rose on, th on the third day. Three, 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 three. We fasted. Three, three. Remember we fasted? We fasted. We fasted. Hallelujah. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, triple grace, 55515. Five, five, My God. This is what the prophet said. The Lord told him what he's going to do. Because God getting ready to do some big things for us. Where we're going to see the power of God for real. Then I'm a plain church doing religious things. We're going to see the power of God for real. You're going to see the power of God. I got to turn my music up real quick. Let me, let me turn my music up. I got to get, get some worship. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I got I to hear my worship because we're getting ready to see the power of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Um, so it says in verse 9, this is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward 10 steps or shall it go back 10 steps? 
Verse 10. It is a simple matter. It is, it is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward 10 steps, said Ezekiah. Rather, have it go back 10 steps. With the sun and the shadow. Verse 11. Then the prophet Isaiah called on the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back the 10 steps it had gone down on the stairs of Ahaz. Now listen, that just intrigued me right there. That just like, I'm gonna go back, give you more years. That's what it looked like to me. The same way God had the sun stand still so that Joshua can fight and have light to see to whoop the enemy because we had the victory, right? We had the victory. And so it says, God made the shadow go back 10 steps. Let's go. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Go back 10, 10 steps. Right? Go back 10 steps to show that God is, God is in control of everything. Even the sun has to line up with God. Go back 10. Now, what's the symbolism of the 10? Because we already know about the sun. The sun of righteousness is Jesus. 10, 10, 10 step back. Restoring the years. I'm restoring the years. I'm restoring the years. You shall not die but live to declare the works of the living God. In the name of Jesus. Whew. Okay. Ten in the Bible. This is what number ten represents in the Bible. Because everything is there for a reason. You got fifteen, right? Five, ten. And you got five, ten, fifteen. So number ten in the Bible represents testimony God you know God says you overcome the devil by the words of your testimony by the blood of the lamb right the testimony of Jesus the prophecies right the law the Ten Commandments responsibility we have a responsibility to serve and obey God worship him and God our father has a responsibility of taking care of us that's why I ain't worried about nothing hi Michelle okay it also means completeness of order Please write that down. Number 10 represents completeness of order. God is complete in your situation and give you divine alignment in the name of Jesus. Completeness of order. Where things were chaotic and things were out of whack. You was not healthy. It wasn't the best of hell. God said completeness of order. Listen, that's 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 what shalom means. Shalom means, shalom means peace and wholeness. Completeness of order. You know when you are whole, honey, there is completeness of order. And who is your completeness? of order. It is God most high in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I'm rejoicing for myself because I know what God shows me every single day. I was in the store. I saw something that says five for five dollars. I'm like, okay, five for five dollars. But five again, I make sure I pray attention. Pray attention to all that he's showing me. Then he showed me um, central and he showed me century. You know the root word, I think it's a root word. C-E-N-T means 100. 100 full blessing is coming to us because on Sunday, one of the prayer warriors gave me the scripture, um, Genesis 26, about Isaac. I love this chapter. Anybody who hear me, I always talk about Isaac and how God made him reap a hundredfold blessing, you know, when he reaped in the same year. Hundredfold blessing to infinity. Jesus was talking about the farmer, and he said the um the 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 seed, the word of God fell on good ground. And what 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 it says? It says he reaped a harvest of sixty, a hundredfold, whatever, hundredfold blessing. Let me get those verses for you. He showed me cent century and central, central twice, century once, and the and and the um the. The vehicle that had the word century had 1,500 on there. They're going to have five again. So I'm like, Father God, you can speak to me all day and I will pray attention, honey. Let me give you that verse in Matthew. It says a hundredfold. Let me get that for you. Let me get that verse for you in the book of Matthew. And then we talk about Isaac. So in the book of Matthew 13, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord God is good. When God does it, it's in abundance. He said, I will do exceedingly and abundantly for you above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that's working inside of you. Who's the power? The Holy Ghost. God's dunamis power that's in control of everything. 
So that's why we're not worrying about anything because God is in control of everything. Matthew 13, verse 8. Still other seed fell on good soil. Okay, make sure you got your good soil in your heart. Where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. A hundred times blessing, a hundred fold blessing. That's Matthew 13, 8. I received my hundred fold blessing, Father God, a hundred times. A hundred times, whatever I have right now, I receive it. I also receive Deuteronomy 1, 11, a thousand fold blessing, Father God. Increase us more and more in the name of Jesus. Let's go to Isaac. I, I, Isaac reaped in the same year. You don't do that. When you, when you grow your crops, you don't reap that thing. That's the book of Genesis. I think it's Gen, Genesis 26 with Isaac. Let's see if that's it. Where he reaped the harvest. Let me see if I can find it. So I can share that with you. Genesis 26 verse 12, I believe it is. Yes, Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year, he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed them. Because when the Lord is blessing you, he bless you real good, honey. <laughs> he bless you real good. Where? In the presence of your enemies. In the presence of your enemies. In the presence of your enemies. Another translation. Isaac sold in that land and reaped in the same year 100 times what he planted. Yahweh blessed him. And so God has been talking, about, uh, talking to us about orbit. Right? And how it, you, you know, the, the sun goes around. I mean, the, the earth goes around the sun. 365 days which is gonna give you 12 months right 12 months it said the same year those of you listening to me expect God to do some great great things for you this year some great I'm talking about 24 hour blessings right every day God gonna be doing something big for you he said that the um the earth goes around and act around around its axis it orbits its axis. four hours God is doing something great I said this, I think it was on Sunday I said it. I think it was on Sunday or whatever, or Monday. How about yesterday? Because I prayed. Yesterday I was, I, was, I was worshiping God and doing Facebook Live, worshiping God and praying and such. Pray for finances. I became director with paparazzi yesterday, last night. Boom. I'm talking about 24-hour blessings. 24 hour blessings. You don't got to receive that. I receive it from me. Those who have the faith to believe it. You expect it. Every day you wake up, you expect God to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. That's how we do it. Okay? Then I was driving. Because when we talk about five, 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 I was driving and there was a sign that says Hannah. You know, Hannah means grace. Number five is symbolic of grace. Hannah, I'm saying, what is this? You know, my eyes, I'm praying attention. It says Hannah, number um, 103. Remind me of Psalm 103 where God says he, um, he, sent his, he sent his angels to fulfill the word. Amen. But Hannah means grace. Hannah, uh, that's Samuel's mama, I think it is. Right? Hannah, who was barren. And God opened up her womb and she gave birth to one of the greatest seer prophets, Samuel. Hannah means grace. We have the grace of God in our lives. Amen. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's because of the grace of God, the, the goodness of God, the favor of God, the unmerited favor of God through the blood of Jesus. And so God going to bless us real good. Those of us who've been humbling ourselves and living holy, every 20, listen, every day I'm expecting my blessing. Every day I wake up, I'm like, Father God. And I, I, I go and I make sure when I go out, I'm like, Father God, leave, leave and guide me. He said, wherever my foot, where my, wherever my foot touch, my, wherever my feet go, he going to give it to me. So I walk in full authority, full authority every single day because I'm like a bird. I don't follow nobody's system. I don't. If God don't bless me, I don't get my blessing. I'm not tied to nobody like that. It's just me and God. I get up and I'm like, I know my God going to bless me. And I saw two cardinals. Today, I was leaving my house and two red birds, the cardinals, flew by me. Now, wh wh why is that important? Because I saw the word central. Let me go to my central. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, let me tell you what the word central means. Central means 
let me let me let me let me talk about this. Cause those of you who um, were on the prayer call, and you know I talk about the word core, and 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 all this stuff. I'm telling you, I was just talking to my last night, and they mentioned the word core, and I'm like, Father, you keep on talking about core. I saw core five a month ago, I think it was. Then he showed me central. Central means middle. It means main. It means chief, principal, primary, first, most important, dominant, key, core, vital, essential, basic, fu fundamental, prime, major, cardinal. I was like, God has to be the central one in your life, the cardinal. Taste and see that the Lord God is good. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Trust in the Lord. Now let's look at the word cardinal. God is trying to tell y'all, you have put me first. I'm the only one that can bless you. God was the only one that could give Hezekiah 15 more years, honey. The doctors couldn't do it. The doctors gave up on him. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know the doctors knew he was going to die. Because doctors don't even know much. Whose report you going to believe? You better go to God. They can't find out what's wrong with you. God going to tell you what it is and how to fix that thing. Get you some figs. Get a paste and put it on that boil. God going to show you what to do concerning your situation. Please share the broadcast. God bless you. Cardinal. What's a cardinal? And I saw two. Two represents union or it could represent division. But we're not doing the division thing because we're not, we're not following the devil, following God. How can two walk together unless they agree? Psalm 133. Wherever there's unity, God going to bless you. So you got to walk in agreement with the Lord so that God can bless you. You got to be in agreement with the Lord so that God can bless you. You got to be in agreement on one accord with the Lord so that he can bless you. He has to be the cardinal. He has to be the central, the central one in the relationship. You can't be trusting everybody else. Trust God. So it says, cardinal of the greatest importance. That's, what, that's how God has to become in your life. He has to be the root, okay? It means paramount. It means preeminent, first, leading, primary, chief, principal, fundamental, all of that. That's what God has to be for us in the name of Jesus. You get it? I'm praying attention, honey. I'm putting God first. God said, jump. I'm, I'm a jump. God said, sit down, I'm going to sit myself right down. God said, do this, I'm going to do it. Let me um, switch this real quick. Four years of going to music college. So maybe it's because it's... I don't know what kind of ad that was. Sick and forever to be quiet. I got to hear my music. All right, so that's what he showed me this morning. What else did he show me? So we talked about Hannah. Hannah means grace. Then he led me to Hezekiah 55515. What else? Let me see what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else. Then I saw a car pass me and the sign on the car says worth it. You want to put God first, you want to put God first because it's going to be well worth it. He's going to bless you so good. It's going to be well worth it. You're going to be like, oh my God. It's going to be Psalm 126 for you. It's going to be well worth it. It's going to be well, well worth the wait. Okay, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. They shall walk and not faint. Let me see what else. So we talk about central. Thank you, Father God. 104 blessing. Wow. And after I saw the cardinal, this is all I, I'm talking about. Less than one hour. I'm going to say it was like maybe 15, 20 minutes. All this stuff came in front of me. <laughs> okay. And so after I saw the two birds, you don't see cardinals just like that. <laughs> okay. Two of them flew by my car. I'm like, oh my God. I just saw one of you guys last week and you waited on the, um, in the bushes like, till I got back. After I saw the the um the cardinal, this is what I saw. This fire truck with number two on it. Do you see the two? I don't know if you can see the two on it. 
right there is backward. And it says rescue. It's red like the cardinal. It says rescue, fire rescue. And it has a two. God is rescuing us, honey. He said, sing for us, sing for us, Wolf Stacy. Girl, I wish I had a voice. Oh my God. Some days I because I be dealing with so much allergy stuff. Could I sing today? <laughs> Let me see if I can sing. <laughs> Let me pause my music. We worship you, oh God. We worship you. I only can sing prophetically. Hallelujah. We adore you. There you go. That, that, that's for you, Ruth. <laughs> We love you. We adore you, Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is great and greatly to be praised. He is great. Oh, oh we love you. God, we love you. Lord, we need you. You are great and greatly to be praised. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good, so good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we need your grace, oh God. We need your grace, oh God. We need your grace. We need more grace. We need more grace. Oh, we need you. Hallelujah. A hundredfold blessings. A hundredfold blessings. Rain on me. Rain on me. There you go. That's your song. <laughs> That's your song, Ruth. You pull it out of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One hundred full blessing for Ruth. <laughs> One hundred full blessings for Sarah. Yes. Yes. Help is on the way. 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 I'm coming to rescue you. I'm coming to rescue you. Help is on the way. And number two is double. Double blessings are on the way. Oh, oh, double blessings are on the way for you. Double blessings are raining down on you. Double blessings, they're raining down, raining down. I promised you. 
that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters living waters living waters i'm making a way for you i'm giving you water in the valley in the desert in the wilderness i am your water i am your water i am your living water that's for you god bless you all right so that's what he showed me grace upon grace <laughs> grace upon grace 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 god is doing a new thing for all of you i mean it just he repeated himself so much i can't even tell you all but that's that's what i wanted to share because it's it's so much right but i just keep track as best as best as i could and when he when he showed me um no matter what trust in the lord i had to make i had to make a very important decision today and when i saw this that sealed it for me when i saw no matter what trust god i know it's blurry but that's what it says when i saw this i was able to make my decision and then how about i called my pastor and she didn't know all the stuff that i saw and she she just she was just talking about trusting God. She was talking about trusting God. And I was telling her, you know, what I was dealing with. And she said, just trust God. And th the Lord had already showed me that. And, and then she confirmed it. So whatever it is that you're going through, trust God. Now, what, what is the word trust? What does trust mean? What is trust? Because listen, the, the, the shadows are getting ready to go 10, ten steps. <laughs> <laughs> backward <laughs> God is restoring the years oh my god so the word trust what does that mean trust it means firm belief in the re reliability truth ability or strength of someone or something right so we trust that our phone's gonna work we trust that our car is gonna work we trust that this couch is gonna hold me up right we got trust in God but it means confidence, it means belief, it means faith, it means freedom from suspicion and doubt, it means certainty, assurance, conviction, and reliance. Amen? And also trust is an agreement whereby a person holds property as its nominal owner for the good of one or more beneficiaries. You know you have a trust fund? So our trust fund is God, honey. <laughs> I trust what is God in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It says that definition for trust means keeping, safekeeping, protection, charge, care, custody, guardianship. That's our God. God is our trust. Amen. God is our trust. Not only do we trust in God, God is our trust. We talk about that definition. Okay. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I cover this broadcast with the blood and there will be no backlash or retaliation of the devil. We're believing God for a 24 hour blessing. Um, and the day is still young. And so I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm praying attention <laughs> for my fleet to come in, my fleet of blessings to come in. Because I know that God says if I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all that I need will be added onto me. And so yesterday when I, we went to go get some um, envelopes to mail out the jewelry for paparazzi. Those of you who are not selling your jewelry, listen, everybody buying jewelry with five dollars. You want to make some money? Go get your, your account <laughs> and sell your jewelry. I'm telling you. When we went out to get the envelope, look what it says. Seal it. Everything is sealed by the blood. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. When God seals it, that's it. We don't have to worry about anything. Amen? And so, I like how it says um, number two on here. Look at that. Number two. See it? Number two. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yep. Unity. Okay? Unity. It also means witness. Number two also means witness. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses... 
so you just don't go stone nobody and arrest people, right? You got, the Bible said you have to have two or three witnesses. The Bible said wherever two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing, God said I'm there and I'm going to do it. So what is it that you need from the Lord? What is it that you need from the Lord? Go ahead and apply this message to that thing. Seal it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Ruth says it will come to it will come for you or stay it will overtake you. I receive that in the name of Jesus. I need um I think it said two more um what is it? I need two more people to sign up to sell jewelry and I guess they promote me even more. I'm like, Father God, do it. And to be fun listen, I'm not trying to be funny. I wasn't even trying to be a director with paparazzi. The twin doing the little thing, you know. <laughs> we wasn't trying to do it. We were just having fun. And all of a sudden, this mighty woman of God, she signed up and started building her building a team. And then out of nowhere, we have another mighty woman of God that signed up to do her to do to sell a jury. And then we have another mighty woman of God that signed up. So we, we have a team of three. Oh my God. Selling jewelry to people. And because they're five dollars and they're like elegant, people are buying them. People are buying the jewelry and it's ninety-nine dollars. Or if you want to get that package or more. And you get like over 40 pieces. And by the time you finish selling the pieces, everybody buying them, you make you make way more than what you put out or something like that. That's what that's what we did. We just stepped on faith and did it. And then with Carapars, we have a team of um, almost a thousand people. So God said he's going to bless us exceedingly and abundantly. And I'm not even trying. That's the thing about it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not the best business person because I just really focus on my God. And I, I do try. I do try to be a business person. <laughs> but my true passion is to just talk about God all day and pray and sing unto God and dance before God. And yeah, I, I, people call you people, people think that's insignificant or whatever, but that's all I want to do. All I want to do is get up, clean my house as I'm cleaning, play my music, singing, acting crazy. Like for real, I'm acting crazy. That's all I want to do. And God is blessing me because I switch, you know, I gave up everything for God. I literally just gave up everything. You know, I was I was chasing whatever I was chasing. <laughs> I was chasing whatever. And people looking at my resume and they're like, wait a minute. You have all this on your resume and all you want to do is sit down and talk about God all day? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I just pray that God would keep me just like that. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to leave this place where I'm at. Hi, Marion. God bless you. I don't want to leave this place where I'm able to just, me and God, walking around. He talking to me. People looking at me. And I'm, I'm speaking in tongue, mum, mumbling my, you know, in the store, you're like, you know, so you got to cover your mouth. That's all I want to do every day is to get up and know that I'm on assignment to bring glory to the most high God. That's it. That's it. Because I tried everything else. And it stresses you out, drive you crazy, rob you of your strength, rob you of your joy, you know? Just rob you. It takes me, when you go to God, God doesn't rob you of anything. That's what the, the enemy does that. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But God said, you come to me in my presence, there, there is fullness of joy. And at my right, right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God is always looking to give us more of him, right? And he wants, he wants to be the cardinal factor in our lives. He wants to be um, the central factor, the core. And that's where I'm at. And I think I've been looking for this place all my life. But people tell you to go do, 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 do this, do, 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 do. I'm talking about just busy doing good things, but they might not be good for you. And so I, I feel like I found my, my first love again. You know, I found my first love where I get to be me. I get to be me. And when people look at me and they scratch their head and God is like, don't worry about it. I got you. I'll supply all of your needs, Stacey. I will supply all of your needs. You know, don't worry. Don't get nervous. Because one thing, when you try to like analyze your situation based on what the world says, you go, you're going to um, fall short. Because the world tells me that I should have my master's degree and have a good job. 
you know? And I did try that, you know? But at the end of the day, God is like, I want to be your master. Hold on. One second. At the end of the day, God is like, I want to be your master. You know, I want to be the cardinal. I want to be the central one in your life, you know? And so you got to give up the way that the world teach you. You know, God is like, I want you to, I want you to be an entrepreneur, Stacey. And I'm like, but I don't know about business, you know? And he's like, just do it. And I did it. And the team is growing without me. So residual income, if those of you listening to me and God is calling you, to a different level in him. He's calling you to ministry or whatever, call, call, calling you to take care of your family the way that he intended, not, not working five jobs and neglecting your children, your spouse, whatever. If that's you, get you a home-based business. Get you get yourself a home-based business. I don't, even, I don't even run my business the way that I'm supposed to because God, God does it for me. God literally runs my businesses. He said, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. And, I, and all that you need, Stacey, will be added onto you. Don't worry about anything. Put me first. Be a, be, a, be a fanatic for me. Be a radical for me. Just get lost in my presence every single day and I will bless you. And I'm here to say that God has been faithfully doing that. I don't go hungry. My family and I, we don't go hungry. We have all that we need and God always, God always give us what we want, what we need, excuse me, what we need. And one more thing, because I said, I misspoke and said want. I saw the word sensual Wilson today and Wilson means desire. And the Bible says, um, if you trust, it says, um, trust in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me, let me look it up because of my, because I misspoke just now, the Holy Spirit reminded me of that. I saw sensual Wilson. That was my second, second time seeing the word, um, sensual, but I saw Wilson. I'm like, you know me, I'm, I'm curious. I'm like, Wilson, wait a minute. What's that? Wilson means desire desire and yeah desire let's get the scripture that says that i think it's psalm 37 psalm 37 he will give you the desires of your heart let me get that for you i think it's psalm 37 psalm 37 verse 4 the word Wilson, he showed me that it was sensual. So God wants to be our sensual. He wants our desire to be him. Our desire, our sensual desire should be the Lord. That's it. That's it. Everything else will be added on. It says, Psalm 37 verse 4, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so because we are delighting ourselves in the Lord and the word Eden also means delight. So it's like the garden, like we are, we are God, God's gar garden and he's the husband and he's a gardener. And, you know, it's just like we're planted in him and we're being much fruit in him. And he said, listen, just stay planted in me and I'll give you all that you need. I'll give you the desires of your heart. What is or what what are the desires of your heart? God said, I will give them to you as long as they are part of my will, right? So we don't want our will. We want God's will to be done. And he said, trust in me. He says, delight yourself in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. What does the word, what does the word delight mean? What does it mean to delight? Let's look up delight. Delight. Taste and see that the Lord God is good. Delight means to please greatly. To please someone greatly. It means to excite. It means to um, have great pleasure. Great pleasure. Great pleasure. It means happiness. It means joy. Joyfulness. Glee. Gladness. Gratification. Excitement. It means um, rapture. Elation. Okay? And so let's go back to it. So joy. Then, then we start out by saying that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So it says in Psalm 37 verse four, take the light, take joy in the Lord. So it shouldn't be a burden for you to praise God. It shouldn't be a burden for you to pray. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, it should not be a burden. It says, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And, um, another translation says, do what the Lord wants and he will give you your heart's desire. And 
Be happy with the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And those were the different translations. And that's Psalm 37 verse 4. And the word... Desire means strong, a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. What are the desires of your heart according to the, the, the word of God, the will of God? Amen. Some of you really want your marriage to be put back together. You really want your children to be um, saved and such. You know, those are, those are great desires to have because God says whom he has joined together, let nobody separate. He says, he said, our children are a reward from him. Some of you have a strong desire to be healthy. That's, those are great biblical, um, you know, desires to have. Marion says, take up on the heights. Take up on the heights with the Lord. Yes. Yes. Go high in him. He's giving you the feet of a deer to climb the high places in the Lord. That's why he told, the, he told John in the book of Revelation, come up higher and I will show you things. So God wants to go higher. You, you, you want to get lost in the Lord. Amen. So desire is... A strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. It means um, your hunger. The Bible says to hunger and thirst after righteousness because you're going to be filled. And it says taste and see that the Lord God is good. So God is like, I want to be your main desire. Okay. I want, I want to be your delight. I want to be your everything. Um, desire also means, um, a, 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 what is it? A burning you have a burning determination. It says aspiration. Okay. That's what it, it's, it's a strong, it's like strongly wanting something. You strongly want something. Okay. Um, you thirst, you thirst for it. It says thirst. That's why Christ says they that hunger and thirst at the righteousness will be filled. When you, um, have a desire, it says, um, also means required, necessary, proper, right, Correct, appropriate, fitting, chosen, selected, called for, expected. I love the word expected. Every day I expect God to give me a 24-hour blessing. What does the word expect mean? When you expect something, it's a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. So we have to have a strong expectation that God is going to do what he says. Amen? You got to trust God. God, if God said it. I believe it, I perceive it, I believe it, I receive it, I achieve it by faith in the name of Jesus. Be blessed, everybody. Those of you who want to sow into the ministry, I'll put the link for you to sow. Share the um, broadcast. I'm going to put the link for the paparazzi for those of you who want to sell jewelry to your coworkers, to your neighbors, to your family and friends. And if you want to save gold, I'm going to put that too. Because after we, after we sell our jewelry, right, the twins get their little stuff. You know, the twins going shopping, honey. I know common sense. I'm going to exchange my, my fiat, my cash for gold. And that's how the wise do it. God is great. You have to have a strategy. It's like God gave um, Isaiah the fig to put on the boil that um, the Hezekiah had. God going to give you divine, successful strategies. Okay? Practical things to do to make your marriage better, to make your family better, to make your business better, to make everything better. And I'll talk to you guys later.